Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the Fall Hawk Watching Update for September 11th, 2022. Let's start off by getting caught up to speed on what's happened since I made my last video. So the past two days were generally sunny across the region, just really nice weather, light winds. So let's look at a couple hawk watches that the numbers stood out to me a little bit. So we'll start with Allegheny Front, which is in southwestern Pennsylvania. In the past couple days, 154 broad wings, 143. So they're starting to get some decent numbers. We take a look at Hawk Mountain, which is north of Redding, Pennsylvania, on the Kittatinny Ridge. Likewise, past two days, right around 200 broad wings each day. If we look at Wagoner's Gap, which is near Carlisle, Pennsylvania, they're also starting to get broad wings, 369, 177. Farther north at Putney Mountain, Vermont, past three days were good, 770, 657, 276. So definitely decent numbers of broad wings starting to move through New England. Jack's Mountain in Pennsylvania, around 800, 543 broad wings. So again, central Pennsylvania, a lot of broad wings starting to move. And if we go farther west and north, at Hawk Ridge in Duluth, Minnesota, on September 10th, they had their first big broadwing day with about 750. Now, if we look at the current weather situation, we see that there's a lot of rain passing through here in Delaware, through Pennsylvania, up into New York, and headed towards New England. So a lot of sites probably won't be counting today just because of the rain. We have this low pressure system over the area, just bringing rainy weather for a few days. Um, so won't be much broadwing migration for the next few days but then after that it was looking like a lot of good days coming up next week especially mid to late week if we take a look at the frontal map for tomorrow morning september 12th we see just low pressure throughout the region i know here in delaware they're calling for more rain showers in the morning and then a chance of thunderstorms in the afternoon so might not even get the count in tomorrow but then after monday looking at tuesday and then especially wednesday and afterwards we're looking at uh, sunny weather again, light winds. So that's when we really need to start looking for decent numbers of broad-winged hawks to be moving throughout the mid-Atlantic and New England regions. Okay, now I'll go through my photos from the Ashland Hawk Watch for the past few days. So if we jump back to September 9th, we see that it was really beautiful weather, sunny skies, a few passing cumulus clouds here and there, but just a high pressure system sitting over the region, kind of light northeasterly winds. So just a really beautiful day to be out. Not a huge number of migrants, but a lot of good photo opportunities and just can't get any nicer than this kind of weather. In the morning, I was treated to this yellow-billed cuckoo perched out in the open. This male American kestrel perched in a tree in front of the hawk watch in the early morning as well. Had a nice look and got some really great photos of this ruby-throated hummingbird that was feeding on some flowers. Here we have an immature bald eagle. Here's an osprey that tried to sneak by overhead and I caught it as it was going away. Here we have an adult red-shouldered hawk so we can see that orange coloration throughout the underside. We see the dark tail that looks like it has thin white lines like chalk lines on a blackboard. And we can see the pale crescents near the wingtips and somewhat squared off wingtips as well. Here's a common raven that was soaring overhead. This great blue heron was flying really high up, like when I took this photo. And then as we watched him, he kind of got overhead and passed us a little bit. And then he tucked almost into a stoop and really dropped out of the sky down onto the Red Clay Creek. Here we have a juvenile red-tailed hawk. So again, all those classic field marks the dark patagial bars here in the shoulder area, the dark belly band, and it's a juvenile, so no dark trailing edge to the wing and no red tail. And these little guys here are probably spotted lantern flies. Here we have a red-tailed hawk in a much different posture, sort of a glide or a dive posture. But again, we can see the same field marks, especially the dark patagial bars and the belly band. Here we have an adult bald eagle in a glide posture coming at us. Here's a turkey vulture that gave us a nice look. Here's an adult red-tailed hawk. Again, we see the dark patagial bars and belly band that all red tails show. And it has a dark trailing edge to the wing and a red tail, so we know it's an adult. Here's another juvenile red-tailed hawk. So again, dark patagial bars and belly band like all red tails show. But it's juvenile, so no dark trailing edge and no red tail. Here we have a juvenile cooper's hawk. 
sort of a flying cross. You can see that fairly large head, very straight wings, and long tail. It lets us know it's an occipiter. And we can see it's got a very rounded tail tip because the outer tail feathers are shorter than the central tail feathers. And he's got a nice bold white tip to the tail as well. And we know it's a juvenile just because of this vertical streaking on the underside. And again, when I say vertical, that's as if the bird was perched upright on a branch. It would be vertical teardrop streaking. Here we have a broad-winged hawk. And especially notice how pointy the wings of broad wings look. And watching this bird fly, you would notice that it was significantly smaller than a red-tailed hawk. Here we have an American kestrel. So just these really pointy wings let us know it's a falcon. Now we can see this really light underneath, which is usually a good field mark to know that it's a kestrel rather than a merlin, which usually look darker underneath because of their dark streaking on the breast. And good timing. Right after that kestrel, we did have a merlin. So you can just see how dark they look underneath with all this streaking here. And also they kind of have a distinctive tail pattern where from a distance it looks dark with some white bands on it where you get these white tips to the feathers. And me and a friend stayed late and we had the most incredible show you could imagine. It was sunny still and just that evening sun as the sun was setting got tons of bugs up. There were hundreds of dragonflies swarming around, mostly common green darners, but also some black saddlebags and other species. But majority were green darners and then above them you had lots of tree swallows and then we had a really really great show of common nighthawks like we see here and i was really happy to get this photo the top side of a common nighthawk with that evening sun hitting it perfectly so just a really amazing show and with nighthawks sometimes you see larger numbers but they're farther away but on this night we had moderate numbers but really really great looks low altitude in perfect light so it's just a really fun night to be out and you never know when that kind of thing is going to happen we went again the next night and it was okay but not the same so we had just happened to time it perfectly and one more look at a common nighthawk and i just think that its face looks kind of funny in this one and if we take a look at the ebird checklist again this is september 9th had 56 species and a really good day for getting photos and if we look at the hawk count report for the migrant raptors, we had four osprey, four bald eagles, three northern harriers, four cooper's hawks, one broad-winged hawk, four red-tailed hawks, eight American kestrels, and one merlin for a total of 29 migrants. If we take a look at September 10th, we see it was an another beautiful day. A little bit of fog in the valleys in the morning, but mostly sunny skies. Then there was a high layer of cirrus clouds. And then eventually cumulus clouds were starting to form and moved in. And then throughout the afternoon, there were some thicker cloud layers that moved in, alternating with a bit of sunshine. So more clouds to help us spot um, rather than staring at blue skies of death all day. Um, but yeah, just a really pleasant day to be out again. And just, you know, the clouds were a sign of the rain that was moving in for the next few days. The blue grosbeaks are still around, and I really enjoy seeing them just because it's a species that I don't get to see much back home in Pennsylvania. Here's a belted kingfisher that flew by, and they're not too rare. A lot of times we'll hear them and see them down towards the creek. And it was also nice to see a green heron fly by. Here we have a juvenile cooper's hawk, so we can see the same thing we talked about from the previous day's photos. Really straight wings, long tail like a flying cross, You've got that head that sticks out quite far, and a rounded looking tail tip because the outer, outer tail feathers are shorter than the central ones. And we can see that vertical streaking that makes it a juvenile. Taking a look at this bird, we see that it has very pointed wing tips and it's dark overall, a lot of dark streaking underneath. It's a small falcon. Those field marks make this a merlin. Here we have an immature bald eagle and we can see that it has replaced some of the wing feathers so these longer feathers on the wings are ones that are um, it grew in the nest these are the juvenile feathers that it has retained whereas the shorter darker ones are places where it has already replaced those feathers so this is a bird that uh, would have been born last summer and is just um, going through its first molt this summer here we have a juvenile red-shouldered hawk high overhead and we can see those translucent crescents near the wingtips that are a great field mark to use for red shoulders both juveniles and adults and we can see that even when it has the wingtips tucked back a little bit they still look quite rounded it's not that super pointy look that you see on broad wings 
And speaking of broad wings, here we have one. And again, their wingtips look pretty pointy because their wingtips are only made up of four feathers compared to five feathers for red shoulders and red tails. Red tails, of course, would have dark patagial bars in this area, whereas broad wings and red shoulders do not. We know that this is a juvenile because of the underside streaking. It's kind of a very sparse vertical streaking. And the tail is sort of a typical juvenile tail, which it changes depending on whether it's folded or fanned. Um, but it is a bit stripy, but it's not that typical adult looking tail that um, adult broadwings have kind of a tail that looks black with a very bold white band on it. This is more like multiple bands with a thicker band at the tip. And juvenile broadwings, um, they don't have the dark trailing edge like the adults do, but they, the trailing edge can look somewhat dark like we see in this photo. So be careful about that sometimes. Here we have an adult red-shouldered hawk going overhead. And we, we see that this one doesn't show much orange, but we can tell that it's an adult just from the, the bit of the tail pattern and all this black and white here along the trailing edge of the wing and on the wing tip. And you can get a sense of those um, translucent crescents, although this one's tucked in pretty good as he's gliding. Here we have a juvenile bald eagle. So it would have been born this summer probably. Just really clean looking overall, dark head, dark underside of the body. Um, these pale inner primaries, the tips of the inner primaries are pale and light shines through. That's a good field mark to age a bird as a juvenile. A um, bit of white in the wing pit area even trailing edge to the wing because it hasn't replaced any feathers. Here we have an adult male northern harrier, also known as a gray ghost. And the thing that stands out to me about this one is the tail looks a bit forked. I think it's probably um, replacing some tail feathers there or missing a feather. So this isn't typical to see the forked tail like that, but it's probably just a sign of molt. And the adult male harriers are this beautiful kind of gray silvery plumage, whereas the Female, adult females and juveniles of both sexes are more brown underneath. So the adult males are the ones that are easier to definitively age and sex from a distance. And here we have one of those brown type harriers that went overhead shortly afterwards. And um, it's hard to tell if this is an adult female or a juvenile. Um, we'd be looking for this, how much streaking is on the upper breast and also how, much, how heavily marked it is throughout the... Uh, sort of the covert region of the wings. Um, so hard to tell on this one just because it was late in the day and the lighting's not that good, but either a uh, adult female or a juvenile Northern Harrier. And we stayed late again, hoping for the same dragonfly swallow nighthawk show. And we had some pretty big swarms of tree swallows like you see here. And almost all of the swallows were tree swallows. There were some small numbers of barn swallows as well, but predominantly we're seeing tree swallows. And the one group I saw was in a really tight group up high. They must have been on a swarm of bugs, and they I think I counted 150 or more tree swallows just in that group. Here we have another immature bald eagle, and this looks like an older immature, like a fourth year maybe. Um, the trailing edge of the wing is pretty even because it's already replaced all of the juvenile feathers. Um, overall, it's starting to look like an adult. You can see the tail is getting quite white. If we had a better look at the head, that's probably mostly white as well. And the, the whole underside is mostly dark with just a few white patches here and there. So I'd bet in another year or two, this would look like a full adult. And President Biden is in town this weekend. He lives just a few miles from the Hawkwatch. And so all day, whenever he's in town, we hear these jets flying around overhead. And I believe this is an F-15. And we also saw a KC-10 tanker that was circling around all day as well. Taking a look at the eBird checklist for the day, so again, September 10th, at 53 species. And looking at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, I counted the first turkey vultures of the season. Really hard to, to know which ones to count this time of year and which ones not to, but um, they look like they were moving. So I counted seven turkey vultures, two ospreys, seven bald eagles, two northern harriers, one sharp shinned hawk, three cooper's hawks, four red shouldered hawks, two broad winged hawks, three red tailed hawks, two American kestrels, and three merlins for a total of 36 migrants. And if we take a look at the weather forecast, it says tomorrow, but actually it's today as I'm recording. So Sunday, September 11th rain likely and actually i'm looking out the window now and it's pouring down rain so potential for heavy rainfall high in the low 70s and light east southeast winds so 
Um, again, we saw the map at the beginning of the video, not much migration happening across the region today. For Monday the 12th, we're looking at rain showers in the morning with numerous thunderstorms developing in the afternoon. High 81, winds light and variable. Expect minimal to light migration. Again, just kind of rainy weather overall. Not sure if we'll get the count in here at Ashland or not, um, but not looking like a great day either way. And then I think at some point um, a cold front is going to come down through. Looking at the map, they're not really showing it that much. Um, off to the northwest, like even out of Pennsylvania, they're showing kind of a stationary front, and I don't know if that eventually pushes down through sometime late on Monday. Um, but after Monday, things are definitely clearing up as we get back to more of a high pressure over the region. So for Tuesday, it's saying cloudy skies early and then partly cloudy later with a stray shower or thunderstorm possible. Um, when I checked this morning, though, I think that they actually um, updated the forecast. I think everything's going to shift a little earlier, and it's now saying that Tuesday we're looking at mostly sunny skies for the day. So it uh, could be a pretty nice day with um, finally some westerly winds. Um, here in Delaware, it's been um, mostly light northeast winds for the past week. And then uh, yesterday shifting around more southerly. So interesting to finally get more of that westerly flow. A lot of west winds, northwest winds coming up this week. And, um, you know, we're coming up into the peak time for broad-winged hawk migration. Next Saturday is September 17th, and that's one of the dates that is traditionally thought of as being the peak time in the Pennsylvania region. Um, maybe New England as well, um, or maybe slightly earlier for them. I know here in Delaware, the past couple years, we haven't really got a big push around that September 17th date. It's been more like a week later, getting the second push of broad wings. Um, but it's looking like once this rain clears out tomorrow, that um, there's going to be a lot of good conditions for broad wings to be migrating. So I would not be surprised if we're starting to see um, broad wings a little bit early this year, just because of the nice weather. We got this rain out of the way. So should be no rain holding them up as we get into mid and late week. So um, if you're trying to plan your schedule, I would say towards the end of this week is definitely um, looking like a good time to get out hawk watching and see some broad wings. Um, for the extended forecast that I was looking at, it was showing rain maybe like a, a week from tomorrow. So the following Monday would be the next chance of rain. So when that happens, that could hold the broad wings up for a little bit. But um yeah, just what we saw a couple of videos ago talking about Detroit River and how they had a huge push to Broadwings early this year. Maybe Broadwings will be on the early side, especially with this nice weather coming up. So next two weeks should be exciting. Hope you, everyone can get out to a hawk watch and I hope to see some of you out in the field. All right, that's it for today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to Lycobird so you don't miss any of these updates. This is David Brown. Thanks for watching.